Okay, so let's talk about group hair group policy inheritance blocking enforcement and filtering now let's start by taking a look at how group policies are applied so i'm going to pull up my get the right menu here group policy management console now group policies are applied systematically so the first group policy that's going to be applied is going to be the local policy of the machine that you're logging into then we're going to look at any policies that are associated with sites provided that we actually have any sites then we'll look at policies associated with domains and then with organizational units and then with sub organizational units so if somebody's in the guest OU and they log in to a system they will get the group policy from their local computer then the site then the domain then the West Wing OU, then the Guest OU, and then on down for however many levels of organizational units that we have. So that's how group policies are applied in sequence. Now, if there is a conflict between group policies, the last one applied wins. So if the default domain policy says the user is allowed to do something and the West Wing policy says the user is not, then if that's the last one that's applied, that's the setting that they get. All right, so far so good. Now, that's group policy inheritance. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can actually screw with that a little bit. So, uh, first off, you can have multiple group policies applied to a single OU, and you'll see them here listed in link order. Now, if you click on inheritance, you will see all of the policies that are applied to this OU based on inheritance. So somebody here in the guest OU, now we don't have any sites defined, so that doesn't come into play. This isn't going to list the local system policy, but it is going to list all domain policies. And they're given here an order of precedence, which is the reverse order into which they were applied. So the default domain policy will be applied, and then the guest restrictions will be applied, which means this one has precedence. Okay, so this shows us where our inheritance happens. And by clicking on one of these, we'll be able to see all of the policies that are applied to people inside that organizational unit. Now, that's inheritance. We can block inheritance on an organizational unit. So I can right click on my OU and click block inheritance. Now what happens when we do that is it stops that inheritance and the only policies that are applied are the policies from that organizational unit on down. So by blocking inheritance at the guest level, it means any OUs or any group policies that are applied at the domain level, the site level, or at a parent OU level are blocked and don't take effect to users or computers inside this organizational unit. Okay, but what if I want to block some policies but not all policies? So I'm going to start by unchecking my block inheritance, so that's going to bring all of my OUs back, but I really only have two of them, right? So let's go ahead and let's add another organizational unit or another um, policy. Actually, let's just link another policy. Let's right click on, yeah, we'll create one. Right click on West Wing. We're going to create a GPO and link it here. We just won't set any settings. And we'll call this West Wing. Okay, now if I look at my guests, I'll see my default domain policy, and then my West Wing policy, and then my restrictions po or guest restrictions policy. So I can block inheritance right click block inheritance but what if i really want the default domain policy to take effect as anyway i just want to block the west wing well this doesn't give me an option to block some inheritance but one of the things i can do is i can set gpo enforcement so let me go to my group policy objects and look at my default domain policy now you'll see here yeah that's fine you'll see here that this is uh, link enabled, yes. Enforced, no. Now what enforced does is it overrides inheritance. And it is kind of weird because we think enforced, no, that means none of the settings take effect. Actually they do, but enforced, no, just means that this can be blocked by disabling inheritance. If I want to override disabling of inheritance, then what I have to do is I have to change my policy Oops, that's not the one that I want. I want to change my policy, right click here, and say enforced. 
find the right spot to do it. Now what that does is that's going to override my inheritance blocking. So when I go back to guests, you'll see that my default domain policy is enforced. So it is taking effect now. You'll also see that its precedence has changed to number one. And that's because this policy is now forced or enforced. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and remove my inherit or enforcement from my default domain uh, policy. So enforcement overrides inheritance, and the enforcement um, enforcement overrides inheritance, and it elevates it up the priority list. All right. So what about filtering? So by using in uh, inheritance, blocking inheritance, and enforcement, I can make it so some policies apply and some don't. The other way we can do this is with filtering. So let's take a look at our West Wing policy here. So down here is our security filtering. The settings in this GPO can only apply to the following groups, users, and uh, or computers. So by default, all of our policies have security filtering set to authenticated users. And basically authenticated users means, yeah, pretty much everyone. There is another one to be aware of here. The authenticated users is kind of like a catch-all group that just means everybody. So we can, we also have another one called domain computers. So I'm going to do a check name here. And domain computers basically means all computers inside of the domain. All right. What this does, this is allows me to filter my policies on specific users or groups. So let's say I want this West Wing to only take effect for the communications group. Well, here I can search for communications and normally what you're going to be looking for here is going to be the global group because global groups domain local groups remember only apply to the local domain we use those for NTFS permissions but here I'm using it to identify users so global group is an appropriate one to use here so now this will apply to the communications dash G or my communications global group or authenticated users. I want to go ahead and remove authenticated users and hit OK. And there's a little warning indicator and I'm going to skip past that at the moment. So now this is going to apply to users in the wherever I have it linked and it's linked in the West Wing OU. So any users inside the West Wing OU that are part of the communications-g global group will now be subject to this particular policy. That's what security filtering does. It lets us set policies based on group memberships, specific users, or specific computers. And ideally, we want to do it with group memberships because group memberships gives, a, gives us more flexibility than if we were trying to set policies for individual users. It makes it much harder to replicate that way. So group memberships there is the way to go. All right. so. We've talked about group policy inheritance, how it inherits from the domain, the sites to the domains to the organizational units and on down. Uh, we've talked about blocking inheritance. We've talked about for enforcement to override inheritance. And we've talked about security filtering. Now, using these tools, we can really fine tune which policies are applied to which specific users, groups, or computers. So hopefully that makes sense and you have a good idea of how we can control application of group policies.